when gang stalking goes wrong by scare theater um i believe that rainbot did a video about this and i am going to watch rainbot's video because i love rainbot but it was like 50 minutes and anytime a react is over like 35 minutes i'm like oh my god this is going to be more than an hour for sure because i love to talk uh so when i saw this from scare theater i've watched some scare theater stuff before i'm not super familiar with their channel i just figured we'd watch this one also any youtube frogs watching after the fact if you guys want to watch the original video it'll be the first link in the description second link will be my twitch stream and i'm sorry in advance i'm annoying and i pause a lot so yep there you go there's your there's your warning This video is sponsored by Factor. Oh yeah, chat, by I've the way. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Cooking can be a real nuisance. It's time consuming and making something high quality can take a lot of effort. That's why Factor is the best solution for quick, easy, restaurant quality meals that are fresh, never frozen. Factor helps you keep kitchen time to a minimum because with all the meals you get, you can completely avoid shopping, prepping, cooking, or cleaning up. You just pop the meal in the microwave for two minutes and it's done. And it's pretty much impossible to ever get bored of these meals because with 35 different meals and more than 60 add-ons to choose from every week, you'll always have new flavors to explore. I've been using Factor for a long time now and each box I've received has always yielded a wide variety of options, some of which I've never even tried before and I've always been happy with every single one of them. It just makes things so easy. This exact video you're about to watch, I ended up pulling an all-nighter to finish up. And believe me, the last thing I wanted to do after staying up until 6 a.m. was cook something. Factor is a godsend. So go ahead, make your life easy. Dude, when I get bread like that, I'm definitely turning up on some Factor. I'm not gonna lie, dude. I would definitely turn up. Might have to, I might have to hit their, hit their uh, email, hit their line one time, be like, hey, I will literally just, um sing your praises from high F heavens uh if you give me a subscription to your meal service i will i will put the little thing sponsored by factor on everything if you just if you just give me a a, a lifetime subscription to your meal service or a two-year three-year subscription to your um meal service easier by heading to factor75.com or clicking the link below and using the code scare theater 50 to get 50 percent off your first factor box Ooh, and 20 percent off your next month of orders that's code scare theater 50 at factor75.com to get 50 percent off your first box plus 20 percent off your next month of orders now let's dive into this video on october 14th 2022 cops from the simi valley police department executed the search warrant david come to the front door Oh yeah, chat. Obviously, trigger warnings for who didn't knows find what. Anything illegal at all. And the very next day, sorry, Flues and I found ourselves being stalked by droves of undercover cops. Oh, I remember you, bro. I remember you. You were the one passing me that planted fabricated evidence in the Universal City subway station elevator, weren't you? And this would start a trend that would go on for a very, very long time. Please. Get your camera out of my face, homie. I'm not, I'm not playing. In today's political climate, we often see a growing sentiment of mistrust of law enforcement. But the skepticism is nothing new, and to be fair, it exists for a good reason. One of the most shocking demonstrations Based. of this is the Based. United States versus Alvarez Tejeda case from 2007. On a normal day in 2007, a man named Ascension Alvarez Tejeda and his girlfriend were on the road waiting for a traffic light to turn green. Once the light turned and they started accelerating, the car in front of them suddenly brake checked them. Alvarez Tejeda did manage to stop his car in time, but unfortunately, the truck right behind him wasn't so quick to react and ended up rear-ending him. Alvarez Tejeda got out of the vehicle to inspect the damage when suddenly two officers showed up to the scene and arrested the driver of the truck who hit them for drunk driving. The officers got Alvarez Tejeda and his girlfriend to a safe spot and asked him to get into the police cruiser for processing. At this moment, they were hit by another unfortunate event what? when someone snuck into Alvarez Tejeda's car and drove off with it. What? The police officers chased after the car thief but they were unsuccessful in the chase and had to report the bad news to Alvarez de Heda and his girlfriend. Pretty unlucky day for them, huh? What Alvarez de Heda didn't know at the time was that this entire incident was staged. During this period, the DEA had been investigating a drug conspiracy. What? They were able to identify one of the conspiracy subordinates. Alvarez de Heda, along with finding out that he was transporting drugs using the leader's car. They of course wanted to search the vehicle, but there were some- No way! Oh my god, no, nah, that's crazy, bro. They set up a whole- Practical issues in place. If they did a traditional traffic stop, this increases the risk of the suspect fleeing or hiding evidence. As a solution, 
the police planned and staged the entire incident that I just described to you. Every single person involved in that incident were either a DEA agent or a police officer. This includes the car that brake checked them, the truck driver who rear-ended them and got arrested, and the thief who stole the car. The only people who weren't law enforcement were Alvarez de Heda and his girlfriend, of course. What? This is a true story, and the reason I told you this is to demonstrate that police conspiracies do exist. Even though situations like this seem like the kind of thing that only happens in movies, it's very real. That said, it doesn't- Listen, I'm, I'm gonna keep it a bug with you, and this is probably the worst time to admit it, because I, I plan on turning this into a React YouTube video, right? For the last few years, I have been full on a cab. Any officer, fuck them, okay? Now, I got the sad news the other day of looking through Instagram stories that one of the nicest people I've ever met and worked with or been around is a state trooper. So, and also, uh, one of, I don't even know how to describe, basically somebody when I was younger also became like an officer. So, listen, for the most part, it's still ACAB. I personally am not gonna just straight up be like completely like, um, strip completely just shit on everyone. Uh, I will say it is a cab. The system is fucked and we need to rebuild it, but I'm not gonna like go out of my way to hate on those people. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, police still showed up at my door, uh, and said that I was a squatter in the house that I bought with my own money. You know, so it, it's still a cab for your boy for the most part. Um, I just have been trying to like be a, like, I don't know. I don't know, dude. It's been like a whole inner turmoil for me recently. So there you go. There's to be bluntly honest with you guys. How I feel. Um, it's still fuck anyone that goes into that system and will not recognize that there is a problem with it and will not hold other officers accountable and the entire system is fucked so therefore it is a cab i'm just saying <laughs> i'm i'm gonna still uh i'm gonna still try and give uh, at least a little more a little more sympathy to those two people in my life doesn't happen all that often I've made at least one video before where I briefly discuss the gang stalking phenomenon where people will post videos documenting their experiences with what they believe to be gang stalking by the government and police. In nearly oh. all cases of this, the person is typically suffering from something like paranoid schizophrenia. One of the more recent instances of this occurring is from the channel John Law. Fuck them all, ACAB, unless they want to fuck me. Then maybe, who knows? <laughs> Only cops I fuck with are the Paw Patrol. Okay, all right. Well, I, yeah, I guess I, I, guess, I guess we can let that pass. David, it's the Simi Valley Police Department. I need you to come to the front door. Huh? We have a search warrant for your house. What? This police body cam footage, taken in October of 2022, marked the start of what would soon become the public breakdown of a man sharing his extreme outlandish delusions with the world while trying to get by. Did they destroy his ring camera? Have you ever watched an ARG before and thought, man- Oh yeah, no, Leandro, that is fucking valid. Are you up with me? So, A cab. <laughs> and wouldn't it be cool if there were an ARG that was actually real? Well, this is basically the closest thing to that. What? The reason the police are here is because they suspect John Law, real name David, of being involved in drug distribution. David, it's the Simi Valley Police Department. Come to the front door. <gasps> David, Simi Valley Police Department. We have a search warrant. Come what? to the door. <gasps> David, come. It's the Simi Valley Police Department. Come to the front door now. We have a search warrant. They stand outside of his home yelling for like three minutes. They ended up having to threaten to kick down the door to make David open it. David, we're going to kick you in the front door. If you don't come to the door, we don't want to hurt anybody. David, answer the door. You got his gun? Put your hands on your head. Yeah. Walk out the front door. Walk out the front door. Walk out the front door. Keep walking out to the walk out to that flashlight. Anybody else inside this house make yourself known. It's the police department. Where? 
Make yourself known. I'm right here. Come out with your hands up. Keep coming back. Come back. Come back. Come back. Follow me. This woman is David's girlfriend, who he simply refers to as Flues, but I'm nearly certain that is not her real name. Anything on you that's gonna hurt me? No, I don't Nothing. think so. Police department, if you're in here, make yourself known. Hall long hallway, straight across. Close the door here. Bro, I got pulled over while walking, got searched, and put in handcuffs while being thrown on the ground simply for smoking a ciggy, then claimed it was because I looked underage? Yeah, dude, that's bullshit. That's bullshit. Absolute bullshit. <laughs> Greenish, you got this. You be aight. Right Note that David writes on screen that there were no drugs here, despite the cops saying this. I really can't tell either way from what we have in view of the body cam. They continue searching the house and become increasingly frustrated when they aren't able to find much. Alright, they opened up the safe. Obviously they had time. Yeah. Sorry, Matt. What? I don't care, Matt. Let's clear, let's clear these doors. What? Eventually, they move their search into the basement in hopes of finding something more incriminating. And, well, just have a look. Simi Valley PD, if you're in here, make yourself known. And, uh, according to... Very last what? Can you get rid of all of it? Drop some. Oh? Well, <laughs> you got that. That's, that's funny. It sounds like the police are saying they found something, but David claims with on-screen text that what they found was just drywall. Once again, the camera angle we have here is super limited, so I can't really tell. I tried submitting a FOIA request to this police department to get the full body cam footage from other angles, but they wouldn't give it to me, and I'm assuming it's because the case is still ongoing. What I can say is that, from what we can see, the room seems pretty empty. The police do some more searching in the basement, but come up with nothing else. At the end of the footage, David expresses the belief that the officer turned off his body cam right here. Dr. Stars! On paper, the officers claim to have found 16 to 19 grams of fentanyl, which resulted in David being arrested and charged with drug distribution. The legal case is actually still ongoing to this day, which is why I'm going to try and avoid directly giving my opinion on whether or not I believe David is guilty. That isn't really what this is about, and we have to keep in mind that David is presumed innocent until proven guilty. Shortly after David's arrest, he was released on bail until his court date. This was when he created his YouTube channel, John Law. Currently, David is homeless, and on this channel, he documents his current situation as he wanders the streets of California with his girlfriend and his dog. But the thing is, David isn't just documenting an unfortunate situation for posterity's sake. No, not at all. David is out to prove to everyone that he is innocent. Except, the reality that he's proposing sounds dubious, to say the least. Dubious! If you ask David what is going on, he will likely tell you that I'm currently under investigation by the DEA, LAPD, and the Ventura County Sheriff's Department. We've documented police from these agencies trying to set me up multiple times by planting evidence. <laughs> I'll show you what it's like to be harassed by a bunch of dirty cops 24-7. These strange beliefs include him believing that planes in the sky are drones to not to spy on him, and secretly recording police that he thinks have been sent out to stalk him. The most prevalent delusion of his, however, is that nearly every homeless person he meets is actually an undercover cop that was sent to harass him. In order to give you an example of exactly what these delusions look like, I think it's best to just show you. So some creepy narcs left a little package for us. This is one of the first videos that David uploaded to his channel. The video takes place at night on a bridge frequented by many homeless people in the area. While David and his girlfriend are charging their phones up there, they come across a box filled with some food, foil, burnt straws, a computer chip. It's trash. It's just trash, guys. But to David, this is something much more. This is actually a box of evidence that the police left for him to frame what? him. If you're confused about how this box serves as incriminating evidence, it's because it doesn't. <laughs> And this here is one of our first quote-unquote narcs. 
This, in David's mind, of course, means that this guy must be part of the setup, and he's trying to make them take the box so the police can swoop in and arrest them with it. David actually comes across the same guy again a couple weeks later, and has a very charged interaction with him. Do your job. You too, asshole. I remember you. <laughs> what? Bro, I remember you. Okay, me you were the one passing me that planted fabricated bullshit evidence in the Universal City subway station. Dude, Dude that guy's unbothered. He's just like, bro, what are you fucking on? What are you talking about right now? What are you saying to me? YouTube star, motherfucker. Oh, bro, shut up. There's no way a dude with 75,000 subscribers is saying, I'm a YouTube star. This guy is clearly confused, but David doesn't let up. In fact, he continues to throw even more wild accusations his way. Is it your that you put on my laptop, man? Yeah, bro, did you put your on that? What? What the hell are you talking about? Come on, Mr. Officer, you know. I think at this point you have a pretty good idea of what we're dealing with here. What is unique about David's channel compared to the other targeted individuals I've covered on this channel in the past is that David actually has an oddly large number of people who are at the very least on the fence about believing the reality that he is portraying. I think the reason for this is because the other targeted individuals I've covered, who likely have schizophrenia, typically couldn't even go more than a couple sentences without making it noticeable that something was off with them. Something about their speech pattern which is so jumbled and irregular. With David, it's a bit different though. Although he exhibits behavior that could be indicative of paranoid schizophrenia, which is just my opinion by the way, not a medical diagnosis, <laughs> it doesn't really affect his mannerisms in a way that is immediately noticeable. You'd have to talk to him for a few moments before you realized. If you ignore what he is saying and just listen to his speech, it's usually very normal. I finally got the body cam video from the night of my arrest back in October 2022, and it is insane. It shows that the police never found anything illegal in my home at all, and it proves that Detective Matthew Gage of the Simi Valley Police Department committed perjury multiple times at my preliminary hearing. For this reason, I think a lot of people may have come to this channel and maybe just witnessed one of the few videos that were slightly less outlandish than the rest, landing them on the fence of the situation. David's delusions don't only apply to his current situation. In his day-to-day -day travels, he also believes he is uncovering other grand conspiracies. One particularly notable conspiracy he thought he exposed was the idea that the LAPD was purposefully trashing the Los Angeles subways so they what? could secure $54 million in funding for the department. This oh. video shows some of the observations that led him to this conclusion. All those meandering dudes. They're all just kind of meandering around, you know? Damn, dude. Look, his foot's all f***ed up like mine is. What are the odds there of that, huh? It's source. Source, source. Of course. Just meandering. It's like it's not the last stop or something. And David's worldview at this moment, all of these, uh, I mean, I don't want to be offensive, but tweakers is the only word I can really think of here are actually undercover cops sent by the LAPD to further this agenda of trashing the subways. When the subway employees tell everyone they need to leave because the subway is closing. Bro, in these scenarios, it just kind of reminds me, there is like way bigger fish to fry than something like this. Like, if if the fucking LD, sorry, if the LAPD is, uh, is trashing this shit to get 54 million of funding, bro, that's like, it's like sneezing money for police, bro. <laughs> if that guy thinks that's a lot of money, you should see the NYPD, brother, and how much money they get, okay? We got we got bigger fish to fry than this. We need to we need to handle some of the like bigger issues or even some of the smaller issues um or some of the real like things. I mean, e I would believe some shit like this, right? But I don't think that some like this guy in particular is going to solve it, you know? Yeah, he was just trying to find a place to chill. What kind of... His girlfriend said, see you on YouTube? Yeah, okay, dog. It's not like you sound insane. Because if I start talking like this, legally fucking find my family and get help, I do not want to get to this point. That's real, bro. That's real. David meets up with his girlfriend upstairs. Oh, yeah, Chucky. Yeah, he that dude looked like he was used to these kind of crazy in interactions. Speculate about where all the undercover cops are going. 
I think they might be getting picked up on a secret train. Speaking of David's girlfriend, Flues, you're probably wondering what she thinks of all of this. What's wild is that not only does she entertain these delusions, but she seems to genuinely believe them too. There are plenty of points in these videos what? where she will draw bizarre connections to meaningless events. There's no floor six. Maybe that's the cop educational floor, you know? The cops learn to be professional But it students. also could be any of these as well. Operations, information. Yeah, but the fact that there's no sixth floor, but there's definitely people on the sixth floor. A lot of people are on the sixth floor. I mean, actually, that's the only floor really that people were actually on. on. Did you notice that? Yeah. So from what it looks like, it seems like she could also, allegedly, be suffering from paranoid schizophrenia. What are the odds these two people would end up together? It would- Dude, this kind of thinking is like, what I get when I get too high, bro. I get too high, and then I like, notice my breathing, and then I'm like, OH MY GOD, I'M GONNA DIE OF A HEART ATTACK! You know? Or like, I get too high, and then I'm like, watching a scary video that literally has any correlation in my life. Like, this man lived in his own house with his girlfriend. And I'm like, oh my God, this is about to happen to me. Oh my God. There's literally about to be a spirit that possesses my body and it's going to make me drive drive my little Subaru off a cliff. Oh my God, this is literally me. This is going to happen. You know? I'm like, yeah, I don't know. It would actually be adorable if it weren't so worrying. Anyway, <laughs> as David continues unraveling what he believes to be a dark agenda by the police, his... So this man can find someone to match his freak, but I can't. I cannot tell if they are on drugs or if this is a skit. I think he's right. I think they both have like some sort of mental illness of some kind that's like untreated and they are unaware of. Guys, okay, I read that. Sweet, 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 sweet. Oh, it's like when to two toddlers are speaking gibberish, but they understand each other. <laughs> this is how my aunt and her husband, yes, yes, man, each other's delusions. Paranoia grows as he starts to think that nearly every interaction with anyone is some sort of retaliation by the police. One of the most bizarre instances of this was in January of 2023 when he recorded this video while sitting in a public library. The first five to ten minutes of this is literally just David recording the people at the library. Eventually, someone gets a dude needs that ad sense. A little weirded out by this, and confronts him. Spiraling? Oh yeah, that is true. I don't know though. Oh, fair, fair. As you might guess, the situation only escalates from here. I'm making a video about uh, uh, the police, and these cops don't like it. Call me a cop? Yeah. I'll beat your ass outside. All right. Come on. I'll show you a cop. I'm not, I'm not recording people, I'm just, I'm just sitting here. The dust finally settles, and then David goes back to recording the people in the library again. Eventually he's caught in the act and escorted out of the library. Of course, from David's perspective, he thought this whole scenario was the police harassing him because of the secrets he just exposed. You know, you gotta appreciate the irony of someone saying, look at all these freaks that are watching me, all the while he's the only one who's going around recording everybody. Now, from that last confrontation we saw, I'm sure you probably recognized how insanely close David is. Hold on. What? Um, what is the meaning of the uh, long-term consequences? I'm just looking for what. Am, did I look up the right thing? 
It, yeah, it is not. Yeah, by the way, it's not actually illegal. I'm not, yo, I'm not looking for this nerd shit, Google. Give me a fucking rundown here. Did I misspell, f fent, that's fent, did I misspell it? Fent? I misspelled it. There we go, sorry. I'm an idiot. Uh, did you guys know that Jesus was also illiterate? Uh, what? I'm not, hello? What? Why is Fenton also? Uh, this isn't. This isn't what I'm looking for. Oh my god! Side effects. What are the side effects of fentanyl? Will that give me, dude? I'm just looking for the, the side or the side effects. I'm trying to see if this will fentanyl is strong opioid. Pain medication that can only be prescribed by a doctor. Fentanyl is prescribed for severe pain. Okay. Fentanyl is... Okay. What? How... Do, okay. What forms of fentanyl are there? No. What are possible side effects of taking fentanyl? When first taking fentanyl, after... I hope you... Including fentanyl can have side effects, including life-threatening breathing problems, risk of... Oh, my God, bro. Headache, fatigue, loss of appetite. I'm looking for, like, what it fucking does to you. Like, Coke makes you all, like you know, like, jittery and gives you a shit ton of energy. I'm trying to figure out if fentanyl use is playing into this delusion, but apparently Google can't help me with this. You know what? I'm not... I'm trying to make this YouTube content at some point. I'm not going to go all the way to ChatGPT for this, but, uh, yeah. ...is to getting himself seriously hurt. Like most people with schizophrenia... Go to Reddit, allegedly. brother? I don't care. It's not that deep. I was, just, I was trying to do a quick search. David is incredibly unlikely... I appreciate it, though. I appreciate the suggestions. I mean, Chad, if you guys know what the fentanyl effects are let me know but i was just trying to look for like somewhat of a concrete answer there so that i could get the definition of it to actually harm someone even right now i'm confident that david isn't physically dangerous in any way however when you're wandering around the city at night accusing random people of being narcs you're walking into some very dangerous territory as we've seen a lot of people here take great offense to being called a narc and all huh? take is saying this to the wrong person uh -oh. at the wrong time before you get yourself hurt and of course, uh, sure, Greenish. If you want to put it in like idiot terms for me, one fateful if you night, feel like it. this is exactly what happened to David. Uh oh. Why don't you look at that guy? Sir, I'm okay. going to ask you one more time and I'm going to sock you in your face. Cut your phone off of me. This video starts up abruptly in the middle of this encounter between David and this narc. Please. Get your camera out of my face, homie. I'm not, I'm not playing. I'm gonna bust you upside your head, homie. I'm afraid I'm a bit restricted in how much of the- Thank you, Loth. Appreciate you. This clip I can actually show you, but uh after numerous warnings to go away, David continued to stand his ground and took a massive beating. There's no way. Get off me, man. Get the away from me, bro. Hey, bro, get the away. Did you hear me? Yo, get the fuck Get your phone off me! All right, bro, all right. This was the aftermath of the encounter. The video cuts to another clip of David and one of his friends following this guy down the street, continuing to harass him. I f you up, bro! Do it! Go hit Do it, Celia! Do it! Eventually, David's friend hits the guy with his skateboard, although David claims it never actually made contact. He might be on math. Yeah, dude. Fuck. When I'm on the math, bro, I'm crazy with it. I'm like, damn, bro. I know how to do, I know how to, you know, add eights together real well because of Minecraft up to 64, and then I'm not real good at it after that. That's about the only math I'm good at nowadays when I'm on that shit. Tact, but I'll let you make up your own mind on that. And this scuffle followed. I was, mother you. Yeah, just like a real cop, huh? David continues to follow this guy down to the street until eventually they come across some police officers who David flags down to arrest the guy who just assaulted him. This guy, this, this guy right here. He beat me up. He the video. I can't tell if him getting hurt is deserved or not. Like, he's mentally struggling and needs help. Maybe not, but he's literally chasing down, t chasing this dude down the street and harassing him. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, I know. I was just, I was just messing with you. I was giving you a hard time. Stop, stop, stop. Don't, don't wax, 
Relax, 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 relax. Okay, Thank you guys. Relax. Wait! Relax. The cops do arrest him, but David still believes this is another setup and the guy who assaulted him was an undercover officer. What? David was so confident that what he recorded during this incident was evidence of police misconduct that he actually brought it to one of the LAPD stations in a different county. Now, I know what you're thinking. If he thinks he's being harassed by the LAPD, then why is he bringing evidence of said harassment to the LAPD? Just don't question it. As you'd <laughs> expect, the way the officer reacts to what David is telling him is something. So, I've been uh, the subject of, I guess, a multi-agency investigation involving the LAPD, Ventura County, and the uh, DEA. This is so cringe, bro. That was uh, set up by an undercover cop and some uh, LAPD officers. This guy right here is an undercover cop, and I started filming him because, you know, he's an undercover cop, right? He's so being assaulted by the uh, undercover officer. Please, he's an undercover cop. He is, yes, he is. Okay, so uh, how do you know this individual that well, see, assaulted you here's is a police officer, here's, and how do you know he's from LAPD? He's not from LAPD. Okay. He's from Ventura County. Okay. I know that for sure. But he's a. Uh, uh, I was. Here's my problem. Is I'm telling him he's just assaulted me. I have it on the video, the entire thing. You know, I want happened? a report, I want the, you know, I arrest, the arrest. Uh, Let me just around and I'll Thank you, sir. The entire situation is really sad. I could show you plenty more clips of how David deals with these delusions as he goes about his life, but it would get really repetitive real fast. I think you get the main idea, but there is another aspect of this that I found captivating. David is, of course, the main character of this story, but in many of the interactions he has with these people- Oh! Persistent Depressive Disorder, formerly called... Dysynthmia? Definitely messed that up. Major Depressive Disorder, Bipolar Disorders, Anti-Social Personality Disorder, Borderline Personality Disorder, Schizo... Schizo... Schi... Schi... Zot... Zot... Schi... I don't know how to say that. Personality disorder. All things that can occur because of and during the use of fent. So do we think that that could go into this whole situation? Like if he's on fentanyl and he's already schizophrenic, do we think that this would heighten that? Do we think? Can he be involuntarily vul Can't he be involuntarily put in a mental health place? I'd imagine the cops could could issue something since he's harassing people. Maybe. I think maybe if they cared. But the thing is, he's not assaulting, like, pedestrians. He's assaulting homeless people. And seemingly, most of the time, in America, people view homeless people as less. Especially, a lot of times, law enforcement, you know? So that might be part of it. But I don't know. That's just my guess on why they haven't done anything yet. People who he believes to be narcs. Sorry, let me back up a little bit here. But there is another aspect of this that I found captivating. David is, of course, you're whipping what out, Doctor Stars? Main character of this story. But in many of the interactions he has with these people who he believes to be narcs, we see a glimpse into another person's story, and it's incredibly depressing. It's an unfiltered look into some very raw moments. For instance, in one of David's first videos, he encounters this guy while he's on the bridge with his girlfriend. The guy clearly isn't doing well, and eventually asks David if he could call his dad for him. Can you call my dad for me and tell him that I'm going to ask you me? Sure. David obliges, and in the resulting phone call, we get a snapshot of what's clearly a really depressing situation between this guy and his father. Hello? I thought you were just a serious me over me. Can you over me home? You're at Universal Studios. Yes, Dad. Yeah, why do you keep doing this to me? I'm, I'm, I need to know what your address is. Um, I'm at Universal Studios. Um, I, I, where are Universal Studios? <laughs> Whose phone is it? Can you, can, you get that, can you put that person on the phone? Yeah. So I can get the address? Yeah, it's at my address. Of course, in David's mind, this is all a police setup, and he gets incredibly angry. Alright, 
Oh, Yo, bro, get the f out of oh, here right now. Like, what are you doing? Oh, God. We don't know what ended up happening to this guy. In another video, Damn. David is recording some random woman standing around at the park. It becomes apparent that she's likely struggling with a drug problem, among other things. But of course, David believes she is also a narc. The clip cuts to hours later. It's Someone's gonna end up dead? Either a homeless guy or David? There will be your Nintendo Switch out? Nice, bro. What are you about to play on it? This shouldn't have been recorded? Absolutely not. If a person has experienced a significant life event or has some type of genetic predisposition, it could trigger an addiction, a mental health condition, or both. Even just environmental factors slash conditions can influence and trigger these things. Okay, so if this dude actually does sell fentanyl or have fentanyl and he's doing it, that could definitely be causing a lot of this. Work. It's now nighttime and the woman is still there. Damn, they feel you out here all night or what? My mom, she, uh, we got into an argument. Oh, wow, what an interesting been time. Here for six months, that's crazy. I think I missed a month or two, but hey, we don't count those. Yo, what's up, Fish Out Where How's it going, brother? Welcome in. This is, um, this is not at all the video I was expecting we were going to watch that. Now it's just getting sad, dude. What the flip? What the flip? And this isn't just Fent. There are tons of linked drugs with this kind of issues. Damn. Bro, bro, what the fuck? I'm actually getting very angry with this guy. Like, how the fuck can you record that? Treat a person like that? And let alone someone who seems like a minor? Yeah, or very young. Like, it ink links me to tons of drugs that can cause these issues. Oh, shit. I believe it, though. I believe it 100%. Fish out of water. Thank you so much, bro. By the way, to fill you know what we're watching right now, we're watching When Gang Stalking Goes Wrong, and it's basically about this guy who thinks he's getting gang stalked, but he's clearly not. That's why I sent an IRL chat on Discord. It's nasty. I don't... Yo, I don't want to look at something nasty, dude. What the flip? And they feel you out here all night or what? My mom, she, uh... We got into an argument. like, she told me not to come Oh, I see. All right, dude. Whatever you say. I used to stay in the tent because my mom, she just got out of the feds, you know? Got out of the feds? Yeah, jail. Oh, yeah. Cool. Later. And yet another video, Dave records what appears to be someone who just overdosed on the street. Okay, I'm turning yeah. off captions. Also, trigger warning. Um, OD. OD? On no he records the entire incident, mocking the situation because he still thinks this is all something staged by the police. They look kind of like cops. They look kind of like cops. Bro. Is the officer going to make it? Yeah. Nice. I find all these encounters fascinating because at these moments, we're seeing everything through David's eyes as the main character, but to all these other people, they might experience regular encounters with people just like David, making him just another bizarre. What in Logan Paul? Nah, that's crazy. Our side character. It also makes you consider whether these delusions have any sort of protective purpose for David. Witnessing these depressing situations to people who are suffering at basically the lowest of lows isn't an easy thing to do, especially when you are continuously sinking into one of your lowest lows as well. It must be comforting on some level for David to believe this alternate reality he's constructed. Suffering is easy to watch if you just convince yourself that the suffering doesn't actually exist. Ignorance is bliss, right? As far as how David's story ends, that is yet to be seen. The court case regarding David's charges has been ongoing since 2022. David has managed to keep it going for so long by requesting multiple extensions. From the little information available about the case, we can see some interesting advancements. On March 11th, 2024, David made a Marsden motion, which is a request to change public defenders. Clearly, he didn't like something about the way his defender was handling this. The motion was denied. So the next day, David decided to get rid of his public defender and opted to represent himself. What? Which, as we all know, is almost never a good idea. From oh what I've God. seen on the docket, there seems to be no mention of David's mental state, 
but they do seem to be aware of his YouTube channel since on May 10th, 2024, there is a motion to compel David to remove a YouTube video. Although this video isn't specified in the docket, I think it's safe to assume that they are referring to the YouTube video where he showed the body cam footage on the day of his arrest. This motion was denied and David was allowed to keep the video up. As far as any past criminal record from David, the only thing I could find was an entry on myburbank.com that lists that David was arrested on July 11th, 2012. The reason listed is simply... 20? He Wait, is he 20? Oh, and I'm... Is... Do we think... Oh, okay. Under the influence. I was gonna ask if, this, if we think this is his girlfriend, but it looks like that's just how it's all set up. Now, to be clear, I couldn't actually verify this elsewhere, and this arrest does not show up on the background check I ran for him. According to that, the only thing listed is the current case he is going through. And even if this 2012 arrest did happen, I don't believe- Oh, 2012. Oh, 2012. The past crime should play any relevance in determining whether- So he'd be, what, 34? Someone committed a present one. At the end of the day, right? David is innocent until proven guilty. Or 32? 32, he'd be 32, sorry. I don't know why I thought 2010 for a second there. His next hearing is set for July, so we'll see what happens then. Thank you for watching, and I will see you on the flip side. What up, Pete? How's it going, brother? Oh, pixels.com, W. W. All right, well, that was mad depressing. That's not at all what I was expecting. I thought gang stalking was like a gang stalking.